We are in Server 2012 R2, and we are in a virtual machine on Hyper-V, and I'm going to show you how to promote a virtual machine to be a domain controller. So the first thing we want to do is go up to File and Settings, and we want to change one of the default settings that could cause a problem. So what you do is go into the integration services and you want to uncheck the time synchronization. And the reason for that is if the host is a member of the domain and a domain controller is one of the servers that's a virtual machine on that host, then the host is going to look to the domain controller for its time, but then the virtual machine is going to look to the host for its time. And it's going to create a time loop that causes the time to get farther and farther apart. So make sure you uncheck that and then click OK when you're done. And now we can go ahead and get started. So click on the Add Roles and Features. And click Next. And choose the default role based. And then we want to choose the name of the server that we're doing because you can also choose other servers on the network it doesn't have to be the local server when you're in 2012. You also want to check the Active Directory Domain Services option and then click Next and then Finish. Now once that's installed, this has already been installed here, I wanted to save a little bit of time. Now we can go to this little triangle here where it says promote this server to be a domain controller. So let's go ahead and click on that. And here's where all the configuration comes in. Now we want to make this a domain controller to a brand new forest. So we don't want to make this to an existing domain. This is our first one. But before we do that, we want to make sure our TCP IP is set up properly. We're going to want to have a static IP address set. If you have a dynamic address, it could change, and that could really mess up the computers connected to Active Directory. So you want to right-click on your Start menu and open up the Control Panel. And from here, we are going to open up the Network and Sharing Center. Click on Change Adapter Settings, right-click on the adapter, and go to Properties. From here, we're going to double-click on TCP IP version 4 and make sure that our network card is set to a static IP address, has the proper gateway, and then also point the DNS back to itself. Now, if this is a domain controller you're connecting to an existing domain, you can go ahead and put in the IP address of the existing domain controller. But since this is a brand new one in its own forest and domain, we want to point it back to itself. All right, once that's done, we can go ahead and proceed and we can put in the name of our forest. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have a name and then a root, a top level domain name as well. In this case, it's internal. Internal is always a safe bet for Active Directory. Go ahead and click Next. Now that could take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple of minutes, so be patient. And when we click Next, we see a lot of the stuff is grayed out, and it's because it's not done configuring things in the background. So let's go ahead and let it finish. Make sure your forest and domain functional level is 2012 R2, unless you plan on having older domain controllers in your network. If that's the case, you can click the drop down and go back to 2008 if you want. Now let's go ahead and put in the password in case Active Directory crashes. This allows us to log in locally to the computer without Active Directory. And we'll go ahead and leave the Domain Controller and Global Catalog. That's grayed out. You cannot make that change because it is the first one. On the second one, if you choose to uncheck uh, some of these, you can, but it's not recommended. Now you'll always get this message on the first Domain Controller delegation. The DNS server cannot be created, uh, blah, blah, blah. Just go ahead and ignore that and click Next. The NetBIOS name comes up next, and that's just going to show the name without the top-level domain after it. And that's used for your domain name when you're logging in. So, for instance, when I log into the domain after I reboot, it's going to be widget LLC backslash administrator. The NetBIOS domain name is left over from the NT4 days prior to Active Directory was created. And unfortunately, I have not figured out a way to get rid of it. So let's go ahead and click Next. Now we're going to see the default location for where Active Directory is going to be installed. We'll just go ahead and choose the defaults. It's easier to find that way. 
If you decide to move that, you certainly can. Now you can see a review of our selections and everything looks good from here. We'll go ahead and click next. Now at this point, we may see some yellow warnings. We can just ignore those. We can read them and we can look them up if we want, but it is typical to have yellow warnings uh, under the results. If you have any red circles uh, with an X through them, you cannot proceed. You will have to resolve those issues before you go on, uh, but otherwise you can go ahead and click install once you see those. Rather, once you see those go from red back to yellow or to green. All right, we do see some yellows here. I am aware of these particular messages. I don't see any reds, so we can go ahead and click Install. Now, once it's done installing, it will restart on its own, unlike previous versions where you had to tell it to restart. So it will just go ahead and say it's about to close. It's going to restart, and then it'll come back up. And when it does, you'll have to log in as the NetBIOS domain name backslash administrator. So in this case, it's Widget LLC. If you have network cards that you're not using, but you uh, have them set to DHCP, you don't have a static IP address, then you may get an error you cannot get past. And so you'll have to either say, yes, it's okay that I have DHCP, and then it'll let you go through, or you'll say no, and then you'll go to those particular uh, network cards and just disable them. And then after it reboots, you don't have to worry about those. If you do decide to plug them in, you can re-enable them and set them up with a static IP. Well, our Active Directory is installed properly, and so now it's restarting. And once it does, we should be able to get into our new Active Directory domain and forest. Our virtual machine has restarted. Click on the Control-Alt-Delete button, and now we will log in. Once again, notice the login name was widget LLC backslash administrator. You can no longer just log in as administrator. Let's click on server manager and get into our Active Directory. You're going to see the scrolling bar go across for quite a while until it's ready. And then we should be able to Go ahead and go to Tools, and Active Directory Users and Computers. And there is our domain, widget LLC.internal. See, our domain controller is the only server so far joined to the domain. So that is how we promote a domain controller in a Hyper-V Virtual Manager in Server 2012.